message from my mum so if you're not her please keep scrolling i'm kidding i know you're probably not gonna scroll but oh well hi mum how's it going how's it hanging blah 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 blah. yeah um you know the other day when you told me that i was addicted to my phone that oh you need to get out more and stop going on tiktok so much you're gonna get addicted well don't think i don't see you with your facebook and your instagram seeing what sheila and jim have been doing over the weekend don't think i don't see that you know, when you come over to me and like, oh, look at Sheila's little child. I don't care about Sheila's little child. But it's the same thing as me checking up on my favorite TikTokers. You haven't even seen Sheila in like 20 years. Okay, bye. Here's a story that happened to me a while ago. So I usually like to keep my YouTube channels and like whatever private. This girl comes up to me and she's like, oh my God. Are you on YouTube? So I put on my best acting skills and I was like, no, I I don't even watch YouTube. And she's like, oh, well, I have a YouTube channel and I have a thousand subscribers. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. What do you do? And she's like, well, I dance. But get this, you have the audacity to tell us that if we were to start YouTube, we would become famous like her. Honey. <laughs> Now when you've just gone in your phone and it's like your first time on it today, then your dad walks in. When they see you, they're always like, ugh, kids these days. Always on the computers. You know, back in my days, we actually socialized and talked to each other. Ugh, wish kids still did that nowadays. You guys are always inside on social media, like that chat snack thing and talk talk. This generation is horrible. <sighs> well, maybe Dave. Just maybe. You guys talked to each other and went outside because you had no technology and social media. Yeah, you're such an old caveman. Oh, and we do socialize. We just socialize differently to you because there's this thing called evolving. Yeah, Dave, suck on that. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with serial killers. And in fourth grade, we had to do a project that was who inspires you the most. And I obviously just didn't know what that word meant and came to school and everyone was like, oh, my mom inspires me the most because she makes the best apple pie. And then they called on me and my teacher was like, okay, Jamie, who inspires you the most? And I said, Jack the Ripper. And my teacher was like, okay, why does Jack the Ripper inspire you the most? And I said, because he never got caught. Guess you never got bullied again. Do you guys not lie to your Ubers? I lie to all of my Ubers. Tell them different stories about who I am. Like, I, there was one time where I was like in an Uber. You know, the guy was like talking to me. We we're talking about ADHD. And I was like, you know, like my ADHD doesn't really like affect my job though. And he was like, oh, what's your job? And I was like, this is my fucking moment. I told him that I was a ballet dancer. And he was asking questions because his daughter is in ballet and was like, oh my God, like, where did you study? And I was like, he studied in Russia. I said that I was Jennifer Lawrence's stunt double in the Hunger Games. That was a good one. Who remembers in primary school, it would be home time and all the parents are standing outside waiting for the teacher to let you go. And then suddenly a very, very, Serious crime happens in the classroom. Your teacher has discovered that there is one glue stick without a lid on it. She would say, Um, excuse me, everyone. Where is the missing glue stick lid? You are not leaving until somebody finds it. Everyone is on their hands and knees, desperate to find the stupid piece of plastic. It's only a piece of plastic. Nobody wants to steal it. No one wants to sell it. It's worthless. Why do teachers literally want us to wet ourselves on our seats? Like when you're really desperate to go to the bathroom and you ask the teacher, please can I go to the bathroom? You always get the most judgmental comments from them. Like, no, you just had lunch. You should have gone then. Well, Mr. James, I didn't need it then. It's not like I can control my bladder. Come on, you're literally a biology teacher. Or, oh my god, the guilt tripping. Come on, we've literally only got 15 minutes left. You can wait. <sighs> okay, then. I will literally pee on this chair in the next 15 minutes. So, don't blame me. You know one of those really annoying teachers that when they ask the class a question and, like, 10 other people have their hands up, but they just have to 
choose you. And it turns out you haven't actually been paying any attention to the lesson, so you have no clue what the hell the answer is and just end up embarrassing yourself by either saying a completely wrong answer or just saying, I don't know, which also makes the teacher hate you even more than they already do. So now you have no chance on passing any tests marked by them. My dad still calls me like 20 times a day just to check up on me. It's annoying, but I understand that's how he shows love. I was talking to my friend here, uh, and he was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't talked to my dad in three weeks. I'm like, what, is he in jail? He was like, no, I live with him. I just haven't talked to him in three weeks. I'm like, you do understand, if I don't call my dad back in three hours, he's going to call 911. 911, what's your emergency? My son is a dead. It's like, sir, is everything okay? Is your son dead? He's like, no, but he's a dead to me. Okay, bye. That's just how we show love. Can we talk about the injustice and inequity of this? You know when you drop a plate, but nothing chips. Your mom goes like, oh my God, Lydia, that was my favorite plate. How dare you step away? Literally shouting about nothing. But when she drops something and it smashes into pieces, she goes like, oh, oopsies. <laughs> it was an accident. I'll just, you know, clean this up. Um, what? This is not fair. Oh, and some people think that I hate my parents because of these videos, but they're not that serious. I love them. When I was little, I found my mom's credit card. And, uh, <laughs> being a six-year-old, I saw my mom putting the credit card on her phone, and I knew how she did it. So, I decided that I was going to put it on my phone. So, I put it on my phone, and I was downloading Roblox, because I thought, hey, I can play with my friends here. That day... I spent $2,000 worth of freaking money on Robux. Uh, let's just say um, a lot of my friends thought I was really cool and rich. When my mom found out, I hid from her for seriously like a day. And then once I got in there, she wasn't mad. She just said I was Captain Robux. I can't be the only one where if you go over to a friend's house and you are starving, absolutely starving, but you're too scared to ask for some food because, you know, you feel, like, rude if you just say, oh, can I just help myself to your fridge and your snacks? But then the mum comes up and asks if you want any food. You're too shy to say yes or no, so you are praying that your friend makes the answer for you and makes the answer yes. But then she says, no, we're not hungry. Excuse me, Vanessa. When did I say I wasn't hungry? Excuse me, If I see a bug, I will freak out. So much so that a cockroach put me in physical therapy. Basically what happened is I walked into my mom's kitchen to make breakfast. And while I was making breakfast, I felt something itchy on my leg, but I was like, oh, it's nothing. I'm just paranoid. So I ignored it, but the itchy feeling happened a second time. And I was like, maybe I should look down. I looked down and I see this huge roach on my leg. I was freaking out. Literally I had a whole heart attack, did some gymnastics and then fell onto my back. The physical therapist asked me, what brings you in here? I replied, a roach. No, 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 really. What brings you in here? A roach. Is it just me? Like when you're scrolling through TikTok, you could be on any video and then automatically TikTok like scrolls down like a bajillion videos. Like, I'm sorry, honey, but I'm not finished with the one I was just watching. And you've just scrolled, you've just scrolled down like 10 videos. So then you have to scroll up again to watch the videos that TikTok just told you, no, you're, you don't get to watch these. Does that happen to anyone else? Because I've asked my friends about it and they said that it doesn't happen to them. What, what is it about me, TikTok, huh? Why can't I watch videos, huh? Why is it whenever you just look kind of scruffy and you're going to a local shop, you're wearing like a baggy t-shirt, tracksuit bottoms that barely fit you anymore and you haven't even brushed your hair, you kind of just look a mess, you know? And then you walk into your shop and then like half of your class is there. It's like, why? So you decide to go to another shop. Guess what? The mean girl's there. And then you see the office lady. Please just go home and come back when I'm not there. You know how when you're typing on your phone, if you like type certain words, then an emoji appears. It can't just be me who memorizes the words that make emojis show up. So when I'm texting, I'll just write a random word and then the emoji will come up instead of having to go into the emoji library and actually finding it. Like it can't just be me. So I could be texting someone, I could be like, I gotta go, and then just write run, and then the emoji will come up, I'll tap on the emoji and it'll be like a running emoji. The worst feeling ever is when you're having an argument with someone and they insult you but you can't think of a comeback. So you're just struggling and ending up just embarrassing yourself. For example, if they said, 
at least my hair doesn't look like a bush. And you don't know what to say to that because your hair does look like a bush. And then you're just standing there like, so? Which is the worst comeback ever. But literally the next week, you just thought of the best comeback ever. Sometimes I wish we could just go back in the past. Cause I would have killed the arguments back then. Y'all were in on this and then the doorbell rang and it was Pumba Humba. We were all acting normal and then we went out to the trampoline. Everyone except Pumba Humba L looked at each other and counted to three silently. Then we all pushed Pumba Humba to the ground and tackled her. I ripped her hair out. Loopy Doopy threw her around the trampoline. Ely Shack Ely fed Pumba Humba milk because she was lactose intolerant and Sharon Karen poured ice water on Pumba Humba's head. We were all laughing. Pumba Humba ran inside to the bathroom to shit. I saw the shit splatter everywhere through the window. We were wheezing ha 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 She was screaming for help so the parents came down. She was covered in her skinny goopy shit la la She went to the doctor and told us that she had bowel cancer. Karma's a bitch. That, nah, I'm not saying that she took it. Do you think she took it? And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. But I could text her and ask. I text her, I said, Ma, I'm not saying that you did take the plates. But I'm also not saying that you didn't. But the fact of the matter is, ever since you've been here, they've been missing. Texting me back about 30 minutes later and she said, now I'm not saying that you do sleep with your roommate. I'm not saying that you don't. The fact of the matter is, if she was sleeping on her own bed, she'd notice them under her pillow. This morning I woke up and I chose to make oatmeal for breakfast because it's really healthy and good for you. And I usually use cinnamon in my oatmeal. And once it was ready, I took a bite and it was like really spicy for some reason. And I looked back and it turns out I used cayenne pepper instead of cinnamon. Okay, the most embarrassing thing that could ever happen is like when you're in school in like a silent place, you're like in study hall or you're doing a test and all of a sudden you make a fart sound with your mouth and then you make a couple other sounds to make sure that other people know that you didn't just fart but then like you can't make the same noise like you did before and someone's like did you just fart that's like literally the most awkward and most embarrassing thing ever it was my best friend's birthday and she invited me and her other friends to her house she also invited this girl named pumba humba nobody liked her even my friend didn't i asked her why she invited her and she said that we are gonna get revenge pumba humba was always rude to everyone in the grade she would always body shame them try to steal people's friends and would make drama for no reason pumba humba was last to show up before she showed up my friend pulled us all into a room everyone's names were loopy doopy elisha Keely and Sharon Karen. My name is just Sophia. Loopy Doopy told us that when we go on the trampoline, we are gonna randomly push Pumba Humba to the ground and beat her up. Y'all know those popular girls who think they can sing, but in reality, they sound like a super massive black hole. I was paired up with one of them to finish a project, and Miss Girl did nothing. Didn't even type a single syllable. So I had to go out of my way and finish her part of the project. And so today she posts on her Snap story a video of herself singing, Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Bitch, you can go jingle your head into a brick wall, the fuck? I don't get it. How are people so energetic in school at like 8 a.m. in the morning? I would be barely awake. And they'll be there screaming their heads off and laughing at the top of their voices. How? Like, are you not tired? It is so obvious when a teacher has a favorite. For example, my geography teacher. My friend was doing guns with her hands to her friend. And she had to get out of the room and got a detention. But this girl pushed her friend's chair, making her fall on her bum. But the geography teacher laughed. I don't know, that doesn't seem right. Honestly, anytime there are kids around, my phone is in danger. As soon as they see it, they come up to their sticky little fingers and say, Do you have any games? Like, yeah, I do. But no, not with those crusty hands. And then they have the audacity to cry. This is my phone, not yours. My parents, they've been married for 38 years. One time I asked my dad, I was like, Dad, after 38 years, do you still love mom? And he was like, love? Your mom married me to escape communist China. It's a not love, it's a good deal. It's so annoying when people are coming over to my house and then my mom is all of a sudden like, go clean your room, it's such a mess, you're gonna embarrass yourself. Like, huh? Firstly, my room is not even messy. My bed is just not made. How is that untidy? And secondly, why are they even gonna look at my room anyways? It's not like they're gonna enter the house and go straight up the stairs just to inspect if my windows are spotless or if my floor is stained. No, that's not going to happen, okay? Make that make sense. I've been going to the same grocery store with my parents ever since I was a child, ever since I was tiny, right? One day, I was a kid shopping with my mom. We were waiting in line and they were scanning our items. My mom went to go get extra stuff to put onto the conveyor belt. When the cashier saw that my mom left and I was just a child, 
just waiting for her, he scanned all of my items really fast. And I'm like, what's happening? And then when he got done scanning them, he's like, all right, cool. Well, that's going to be about $50. I've never held more than $2 in my hand. And he's like, if you don't pay for this, you're going to go to jail. I literally started crying. And then my mom came back and they paid for all the groceries. Um, ever since then, he's been my mortal enemy. Why do teachers, especially my math teacher, always lurk right over your shoulder when you ask for help? Like, I didn't ask for you to be breathing in my ear with your strong coffee breath, okay? I did not sign up for an ASMR session. Give me space. Stay six feet apart, please. Like, I don't get teachers sometimes. When you and your friend are actually talking about school-related topics, like, is this assignment we're supposed to do? Or, like, how do you do this equation? The teacher will look at you and say, do you guys need something? Or give you that death stare teachers always give us. Then we get in trouble. Also, like, whenever you need help, the teachers are never actually useful. And you have to put on a smile and say you understand because you are too embarrassed to ask them what they actually mean. Like, why? It is so annoying when you're over at a friend's house and you're literally starving since you haven't had any food for hours. And, you know, you can't just go down to their fridge and grab some food. But then, the worst part is when their mom comes up asking if we want any snacks. And your friend says, no, we're not hungry. Huh? When did I say I was not hungry? I'm sitting here as if I haven't eaten since 1969. And if you do say you're hungry, your friend goes like, Mom, Helena said she wants some food. Just stop. Let me jump out the window real quick. I hate it so much when you're in a classroom and you're just minding your own business and doing the work, you know, and the teacher is walking around the classroom like a lost sheep comes up right to your face saying, can I help you? Like, no, Mr. Jones. Do you see my hand up? No. And literally, he always has that strong coffee breath. And I'm just like, please back off. Six feet, six feet. Also, he just happens to be that one teacher who gives you so much homework saying that you have to give it in before the deadline when he's there taking months to mark them. Like, make that make sense. So can somebody tell me why the names of perfumes are always so, like, sensual and, like, intimate? I don't know. I just feel like y'all need to chill with these names because, yeah, I was, I was at church, right? And I'm walking past this guy and he was like, oh, you smell good. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and he's like, what's the name of the perfume? And <laughs> Unfortunately, I decided to tell the truth and honestly i should just lie but i was like oh like this one's called good girl <laughs> it's not that bad it really isn't that bad but i think the worst part was that like painful silent exchange we had after for what felt like an eternity and i was like wow i'm gonna go light myself on fire because what was that it was unbearable i don't understand how people can be like like people on this app are always like i don't know how people wake up and are so mad like how are you already in a bad mood it's like your day just started Maybe I'm in a bad mood because it's 6 in the morning and I'm getting ready. You guys know what I'm talking about because I always hear people saying like, Oh, you shouldn't be in a bad mood. Like your day just started. Don't start the day off on the wrong foot. I did start my day off the wrong foot already by waking up at 5 o'clock. If I'm awake, okay, that's why I'm in a bad mood. If it's the morning and I just woke up, you can't expect to talk to me and for me to respond well. Okay, it's just, it's just not possible.